Now, just to talk a little bit about the difference between profiling and accessibility modeling or, or network optimization. And I want to say from the beginning that profiling or site feasibility studies have their benefits in terms of looking at the development of your network, but generally it should happen after a proper network optimization strategy has been implemented. Now, the situation that we see in the retail industry is that there is a difference between what we call proposed sites versus potential sites. What often happens is that a developer will approach a retail chain and say to them, look, we are developing this residential area or we are building this particular mall. And the retailer will then take up a position in that development in certain circumstances. That's what I would be calling a proposed site. The difference being is a potential site is the optimized location of where a retail outlet should be. And what we often find is that when one compares proposed sites versus potential sites, the proposed site is not in the optimum position. The retailer has now taken up that particular position. And as a consequence, the potential site, which is of a better position, is now taken up potentially by a competitor. All the problem arises is that you've now destabilized the network of the retailer and it continues to pull against each other because of it not being in the most optimum uh, situation. Now, in terms of using profiling, there are two critical aspects that one has to think about in defining the area around a proposed site. Firstly is the concept of zoning. How do you define this area around the site that you are looking at? And there are many different ways that you can do it. You can utilize a buffer, you can use a travel time, you can utilize a catchment, you can look at the use of trade areas as an example, but you need to clearly understand which one is going to give you the best answers in terms of the profiling that you are doing. The other aspect is how big should this entity be? Now, is it a five kilometer? Is it a seven kilometer? What is it that it should be? The bottom line is simply this, is that the size of the entity that you're defining must enable that retail outlet to be financially viable. And that is a very strong capacity aspect of looking at profiling, which is so important. Now, the other thing is what socioeconomic factors should we be looking at in relation to this particular site, which will determine whether that particular site is going to be financially viable. And what we have seen is that the way that you present the data to whatever analysis or model that you're applying has a critical influence in terms of the success of what you're trying to achieve. So for example, you can use raw numbers as an example, or you can utilize percentages or you can utilize ratios. For example, in the one instance, you could look at total population versus population density. But another very important way to present your data is through the utilization of proximity. In other words, how close is this concentration of people to the proposed site that I'm looking at? And those particular indicators we have seen are probably the most important in determining whether that particular retail outlet is going to generate a particular turnover once it is developed. What one often sees as well in terms of the industry is that once this profiling has been done, one then utilizes an approach of comparing the proposed site with similar sites that are already in developed in order to look at their turnover as an example. And my emphasis here is that you can't just simply do it in that sort of a comparative fashion. It has to be of a statistical nature in order to truly define whether the proposed site is going to generate the sorts of revenues that are anticipated. Now, if we look at what we call network optimization, it's a much more holistic approach. First of all, there is the defining of the target market and how many people in that target market you need in order for that entity to be financially viable. You've also got to then take into consideration the travel time, how far are people willing to travel in order to get access to that retail outlet? And in some instances, what is the elasticity of travel? In other words, how far are people willing to travel before they say, no, that is too far? Now, also one then has to look at what is the spatial unit of analysis in doing this? The development of the transport network, one has to then also consider where are my retail outlets? Where are my competitor outlets? Are there any particular barriers in the marketplace that I need to take into consideration that would influence my customers being able to get to this retail outlet? And then also very importantly, what are the exclusion zones? In other words, industrial areas, high crime areas, 
conservation areas as an example that should be excluded and prevented from any sort of retail outlet being identified in those areas. So we need to also understand what are the preferred sites. Now in the motor industry, one of the preferred sites that is often looked at is the motor hub. In other words, it is where there are one, two or three or four motor dealers very close to each other. The industry likes to do that and pull their dealerships into those particular hubs because that's where there is an attraction point for the motor industry. In addition, major intersections are where there is the congregation of people. There's great visibility there. And as a consequence, putting your retail outlet close to major intersections is very, very important. And then also, of course, malls. You've got a lot of people moving towards malls, especially the super regional shopping centers, as an example. So you're wanting to either locate your retail outlet within that particular mall or you're wanting to locate it close by so you can have the benefit of the number of people that are passing by the mall. Now, in terms of retail network development, there are two critical concepts that one needs to be thinking about. The first one is what we call greenfields, and the second one is what we call brownfield. Greenfields uh, analysis is you look at the market as if there are no existing retail outlets in that particular market, and then one utilizes the combined parameters of capacity and travel time to see how many outlets of different sizes and different types this particular market can bear. Now, the difference between greenfields and brownfields is that the brownfields takes into consideration the capacity, the travel time, but in addition to that, it takes into consideration the existing retail outlets of a particular brand, competitor brands, the preferred sites across a transport network. So it's significantly more holistic in terms of how it's looking at these things. Now, once you've done the greenfield analysis, it might tell you that the market can bear a certain number of outlets. You can then compare that to the number of outlets that you actually have in the marketplace. And if the greenfield analysis indicates that there is more potential than what you've got in the marketplace, one can then do what we call an expansion strategy. In the instance where you've got very similar numbers in terms of what the greenfield analysis says and what you have in the marketplace, then one would do what we call a relocation or optimization strategy. The last one would be in the situation where a company is in real financial trouble, it has to bring about a reduction of its retail outlets, and you find that the number of retail outlets in the marketplace is significantly higher than the Greenfields analysis, one would then implement a reduction strategy. And within these strategies, there are a number of models that one can utilize to optimize market share or coverage of the market or minimizing travel times, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. So this network optimization that I'm talking to you about is really about the implementation of what we call an accessibility study. The accessibility study really is about optimizing the number and locations of restaurants, fast food outlets, or retail outlets in a network by maximizing their market share within the smallest area possible across a transport network. 